free. Oh man, it's like music to my ears. There's no better feeling than getting something for nothing. Except perhaps making an absolute killing from it. It's happened more often than you'd think, and some utterly weird things have been sold for ridiculous amounts. So from used tissues to half-eaten sandwiches, here are some of the craziest freebies that people sold for a fortune. Bieber's bangs. Celebrity culture is weird. Personally, I've never understood why people are willing to spend hundreds of dollars on autographs, let alone crazier stuff like locks of hair. Yes, you heard that right. Back in 2011, Justin Bieber broke the hearts of believers everywhere when he cut his hair. <laughs> I'm still not over it. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, Biebs opted to give the hair away to chat show host Ellen DeGeneres for her to auction off for charity. Weird, yes, but you can't knock a good cause. So he came on the show and handed her a signed perspec box containing a single lock of his old do. Sure enough, Helen obliged and chucked the hairy box up on eBay for one lucky weirdo. 98 bids later, it sold for an absolutely hair-raising $40,668. Holy moly. As requested, the profits were donated to the Gentle Barn Foundation, a California animal rights organization. Nice. I don't know about you, but I think I might be in the wrong business. If a poser like Bieber could bring in 40K, imagine what a superstar like me could make. A Holy Grail. You know Pokemon cards. The rarest can fetch a pretty high price, right? But I can do you one better. See this? It might look like old trash to you, but you'd be very, very wrong. See, in 2022, this unassuming looking card was sold for such an outrageously insane price that it became the single most expensive trading card sale ever. Holy cow. But before I tell you the astronomical figure it went for, it's important to know why. Well, first off, it's a cigarette card. Collectible cards that were once included in packs of cigarettes to encourage the habit. Back in 1909, the American Tobacco Company featured Honus Wagner, one of the greatest baseball players of all time, on one. Only they didn't tell Wagner, and after finding out that his likeness was being used, he refused to allow it to continue. Whether this was because of the moral implications or simply because he wanted a little more moolah, we don't know. Regardless, the company agreed to his demand and stopped production, meaning only around 50 to 200 were ever distributed. And of these, many have been lost or damaged, so the few remaining Wagner cards are considered the holy grail to collectors. And I don't mean that lightly. The one in question ended up going for an absolutely insane $7.25 million. Cripes. And although it was the biggest trading card sale ever, several other surviving Wagner cards have gone for millions more between them. Be right back, I'm gonna check my attic real quick. Moon Dust Mistake Did you know that the US government has a federal auction site? Yep, it sells off all sorts of seized property, and they'll occasionally sell off items that you wouldn't believe. Like, you know, moon dust. What? You heard that right. Back in 2015, Chicago resident Nancy Lee Carlson couldn't believe her eyes when she stumbled across a listing for a NASA collection bag filled with the ultra-rare stuff. And as if moon dust wasn't special enough, this was the very same dust that was collected by astronaut Neil Armstrong during the 1969 moon landing. Whoa. It was an incredible artifact from the Apollo 11 mission, and she wanted it. Surprisingly, she won the auction for only $995, which is practically nothing considering what it is. So just to be sure that what she'd bought was legit, she sent it off to NASA for testing. They responded and confirmed it was indeed real, but then refused to return it. Turns out this sample had actually been stolen by one Max Aury, who ran a space museum in Kansas. Harry was responsible for stealing a whopping 400 space-related artifacts and had been jailed back in 2006. Only after the government confiscated the stolen moon dust, they'd accidentally got it confused with a different bag. Dope. 
so when it came to auction, they unwittingly sold the dust without NASA's permission. Damn, that's a twist. Not content with lying down and accepting the situation, Nancy decided to take the issue to court. The judge ruled that while the dust was indeed sold without NASA's permission, they didn't have the power to reverse the sale and had to return the bag to Nancy. She had her prize back and I think you can guess what she did with it. Remember, she managed to snag this piece of history for less than $1,000, while well, she managed to sell it for $1.8 million. That's some utterly life-changing dough. I can't make you a millionaire, but I can promise more absurdly interesting true stories. Drop a like down below and subscribe to my channel to make sure you never miss out on another video. Sorted, perfecto. Let's get back to it. McMemorabilia. McDonald's Happy Meals used to have such cool toys inside. And you remember those little Lego monsters? Nowadays, it's just not the same. But if you've got any of those old toys, I'd strongly advise holding on to them. Back in 2005, seven-year-old Brit and budding entrepreneur Luke Underwood somehow convinced his dad to buy a colossal collection of old-school Mackey's merchandise for $327. Sounds like a lot, right? My dad would have told me where to stick it if I'd asked for that. But Luke's dad trusted his son's instincts and, well, you'll see. Fast forward to 2009 and the 5,000-strong collection had taken its hold on the family house. There was no choice. They had to sell it all off. So Luke and his dad took the McMega collection to a Lincoln auction house and put all of it up for sale in separate lots. Luke was a little bummed out to be parting with his merch, but I'm sure his mood improved when the hammer came down at a little over $10,600. Crikey. What did he plan to do with this newfound windfall? Well, being such a little businessman, Luke said he was going to buy more goods and sell them on for an even greater profit. Hmm, I wonder how many cans of prime energy drink you could buy for 10 grand. That'll be worth something someday, right guys? Guys? Oh dear. Holy cheese. It was the year of our Lord, 1994, over in Hollywood, Florida, and dairy lover Diana Deucer was about to make herself a delicious grilled cheese. Little did she know it would become the most expensive grilled cheese ever crafted. She sat down to eat her grub, took a single bite, and was immediately flabbergasted by what she saw. There on top of the sandwich was the Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. Now, to me, it just looks like a vague face created by random patches of burned bread, but hey, who am I to poop on anybody's roses? So Diana scrambled to properly preserve the holiest of Sammies and popped it in a plastic tub surrounded by moisture-absorbing cotton wool. Then she kept it on her bedside table for 10 years. Only in Florida, eh? Diane claims that the sandwich protected her spiritually for that entire decade and it never once grew any mold. But then one day, she just stopped caring about her magic sandwich and decided to auction it off online. Divine protection gets boring after a while, I guess. Come on, though. Who'd want to buy a decade-old grilled cheese? I'll tell you who. Everybody. After seven days of intense bidding, online casino Golden Palace emerged victorious, grabbing the grilly for a staggering $28,000. What? Apparently, the company saw the grub as a piece of instantly recognizable pop culture and were willing to do anything to have it. I wonder what the Virgin Mary would think of having her likeness owned by a gambling merchant. Hmm. Home Run In October 2001, American former baseball player Barry Bonds stepped up to the plate and hit a homer. This wasn't just any homer, though. This was his 73rd home run of the season, which made him the world record holder. And it also made that ball worth big money. Baseballs hit by famous players are worth a pretty penny as it is, but this record-breaking ball was something else. Almost immediately, a brawl broke out between eager fans desperate to grab it from the floor. After the chaos subsided, two men claimed they had a right to the prize, Alex Popov and Patrick Hayashi. Popov had initially caught the ball, but lost it in the ensuing tussle, and Hayashi had ended up with it. Unable to work out their issue, they ended up taking things to court, where in December 2002, it was ruled they had an equal claim to the ball. As such, they were ordered to sell it and split the proceeds evenly. 
the duo begrudgingly obliged and sold the thing through a nationally televised auction. So how much did they earn? Well, drum roll please. The home run ball brought in a tantalizing $450,000. Sounds amazing, right? Sure is, or at least it would have been if these guys hadn't had a year's worth of legal fees to pay. In the end, they probably walked away with a tiny fraction of what they could have done. Hmm, there's a lesson here about solving our problems amicably. You never know, it could save you hundreds of thousands of dollars. ScarJo's Nose Blow What's the weirdest piece of celebrity memorabilia somebody could own? A lock of Justin Bieber's hair? Pfft, you ain't seen nothing yet. In 2008, American actress Scarlett Johansson appeared on The Tonight Show while promoting her movie The Spirit. It was a run-of-the-mill promotional appearance that did little to leave a lasting impression, except for one thing. ScarJo had a cold. Riveting. The celeb blew her nose twice on the show, but instead of throwing it in the trash like a normal person, she sealed it in a plastic bag and signed it. Ew. The star believed her cold had additional value because she'd caught it off co-star Samuel L. Jackson, so she wanted to sell it. Right. I'd criticize her for that ego, but she planned to donate the proceeds to a hunger charity named USA Harvest, so I'll keep my mouth shut. All right, how much do you think it went for then? $5, $50? Ha! Get ready. The gross, snotty tissue sold for a mind and nose-blowing $5,300 in the end. God only knows who bought it and why. Ugh. If the whole thing is just a joke, it's not very funny. Garage Sale Steal I've never had much luck with garage sales, to be honest. I kind of find them boring. Back in 2007, however, one New York family picked something up at one that would change their lives forever. They were perusing the sale when they noticed a nice little bowl. It was only three bucks, so they paid up, brought it home, and propped it up on their mantelpiece, where it stayed for six long years. But in 2013, they became curious about its origins. Why it took them this long, who knows? Regardless, they decided to have the bowl professionally assessed. And geez louise were they glad they did. Turns out that unassuming $3 bowl was actually an invaluable piece of Ding pottery from the Northern Song Dynasty, an era of Imperial China that lasted from 960 to 1279. Oh man. As soon as they figured this out, the family knew there was only one thing for it. Sell, sell, sell. And no wonder why. The auctioneer they worked with reckoned the bowl would go for around $300,000. <laughs> That's 100,000 times more than they paid for it. But it's still chump change compared to its final sale price. No, seriously. After a prolonged bidding war, the bolt eventually sold for, brace yourselves, $2.2 million. <laughs> okay, I'm off to hit up some garage sales. Out of my way. An intergalactic doorstop. In 1988, a man bought a farm in Michigan. As he surveyed his new land, though, he noticed the barn had a rather unusual-looking doorstop. A big 22-pound rock with a strange reddish hue to it. Hmm. Even so, the new farmer shrugged it off, and it wasn't until 30 years later in 2018 that his curiosity finally got the better of him. After a number of meteors fell in the area that year, he decided to take the odd rock to an expert at the Central Michigan University to get it examined. Geology professor Mona Serbescu took a good look at the doorstop and made an incredible discovery. It was indeed a meteorite. Not only that, it was the sixth largest one ever recorded in Michigan. Damn, but you want to hear something even crazier? It turns out the farmer already knew. Uh, what? Yep, believe it or not, he was told when he first purchased the property that a meteorite had landed nearby and had been put in the barn. But for some reason, he had absolutely no inclination to get the thing tested until much later when he heard people in the area had been finding their own. Okay. I bet he absolutely kicked himself because the colossal space rock was valued at $100,000. Damn. Imagine using 100 k as a doorstop for 30 years and having no idea. Jeez. The farmer's a very private guy, so there's no word on the final sale, but we do know that he promised to donate some of the proceeds to the university that helped him out. 
Man, what's with all these people donating their cash? It's time restoring my faith in humanity, darn it. I've worked hard for this grumpy image. An abandoned treasure. Abandoned places are spooky and weird, and I avoid them whenever I can. But because of this, I might have missed out on some serious treasure. Back in 2001, Larry All, head of maintenance at the doomed Capitol Court Mall in Milwaukee, was patrolling the halls of the deserted shopping center when he stumbled upon something crazy. A sneaker in one of the storage rooms. Eh, so what? Well, this wasn't just any sneaker. This was a signed original Nike Air Jordan from all the way back in 1985. The super rare sneakers produced by Nike for basketball player Michael Jordan have since become legendary items, and this one wasn't just signed by Jordan. It had once been owned by him. Because Larry had worked at the mall for three whole decades, he knew exactly what he'd just found. See, back when the mall was still open, there was a store called Playmakers, which regularly displayed the worn shoes of NBA players. When the store closed, however, the stock was placed into storage, including the legendary shoe. Someone who didn't know its significance had mistakenly lumped it in with the rest, but there was no way Larry was going to let this piece of history get thrown out. So he took it home with him and kept it safe in his basement, where it would stay for many years. Fast forward to 2017 and Larry decided to give the shoe to his future son-in-law and massive Jordan fan, Donald Griffin. So you can imagine Larry's shock when Donald told him the iconic memorabilia was worth some $20,000. Not wanting to take it all for himself, Donnie agreed to sell the sneaker with Larry and split the profits between them. Only they ended up having far more to share than they thought. The single shoe sold for a wild $55,200. Damn. I'm not sure I'd pay so much for an old sweaty sneaker, but hey, to each their own. Nailed it. I'm a huge Lady Gaga fan. I mean, come on. Who doesn't sing poker face into their shampoo bottle when they take a shower? <coughs> anyway, in 2012, Gaga was performing in Dublin, Ireland when the unthinkable happened. She lost a nail while gyrating. Man, I hate it when that happens. A stagehand saw the tragedy unfold and went back to pick up the lost item once the concert was through. He initially thought it was a guitar pick, but I bet he was even more pleased to see what it actually was. This nail was specifically designed for Gaga by then New York-based nail artist Aya Fukuda and was utterly unique. So with dollar signs in his eyes, he leapt to his computer to place the nail up for auction. Now, at this point, I shouldn't be surprised that somebody out there would pay big bucks for a celebrity's fake nail, but the amount somebody paid for this was truly Gaga. I'm talking $12,000 worth of Gaga. That's insane. Hmm, I wonder how much a piece of that controversial meat dress could have gone for. Getting medieval. When I moved out of my parents' place, I made a terrible mistake. I left behind my Shrek lunchbox. I'm telling you, it was gonna be worth a fortune one day. But some people have the foresight to thoroughly check their home for valuables before moving out. Like one little old French lady who was looking to sell her house in 2019. The home and campaign was built back in the 60s and had accumulated all kinds of knickknacks since then. So the woman contacted an auctioneer to look around the place and assess whether there was anything of value she could sell on. Expert Philomene Wolf was given a week to examine the property and its contents and what she found blew her mind. You see, the lady had a painting in her kitchen that immediately caught Wolf's eye. The homeowner had thought the piece was little more than an old Greek religious icon, but oh no. This was Christ mocked by the famous Florentine pre-Renaissance painter Cimabue, one of only 11 of his paintings in existence. Nobody had any idea where this super rare piece had come from, but it was worth more money than they could have ever imagined. Seriously. After going up for auction, an anonymous buyer bought the painting for an earth-shattering $26.8 million. Jeez, our old woman's retirement is about to get crazy. Are you gonna finish that? Man, I just hate to see good food wasted. That said, I draw the line at taking half-eaten food off strangers' plates. Some people, however, are perfectly happy with it if that stranger is their favorite celebrity. You might be able to see where this is going. 
Back in 2006, Britney Spears was attending a catered event at a fancy hotel and ate half of an egg salad sandwich, leaving the rest of it on her plate. The waiter tending to her recognized this as a golden opportunity, and after clearing her plate, he took the garbage home, vacuum sealed it, and popped it on eBay alongside a half-eaten corn dog she'd also snacked on. What a bundle! After 43 bids, the, um, treasure was sold for $520 to Golden Palace Casino. Wait, those guys again? Yep, the same oddballs that bought that Virgin Mary grilled cheese. I'd love to see their collection. Or, actually, maybe not. This isn't the only time that something like this has happened. In 2004, a lump of Britney's pre-chewed gum was sold on the bay for $14,000, which the seller claimed they found in her garbage. Can this be proven? No, but somebody still threw down all that money for it. And in 2012, over in Australia, One Direction member Niall Horan tried to bite a Vegemite on toast on a talk show. For those that don't know, Vegemite is an Australian food spread made of yeast and vegetables. Gross, right? Well, Niall thought so too and neglected to finish his slice. So the broadcaster did what anyone would do sell it online and donate the proceeds to charity. And there were a lot of proceeds. The gross toast sold for a cool $100,000. As much as my faith in humanity has been restored by the charitable donation, it's also taken a pretty big hit by whoever actually paid for it. McNugget Burp Sauce. If you've ever seen the hit American cartoon Rick and Morty, you'll probably remember 2017 Szechuan Sauce episode. In it, one of the show's protagonists, Rick, bemoans the discontinuation of McDonald's Szechuan Sauce back in 1998. Well, the episode sparked a craze. Suddenly, everybody wanted to try the stuff. So the Big M organized giveaways of a precious few 64-ounce bottles of the dipping sauce. And one lucky winner saw a golden opportunity. Rather than down it straight from the bottle as I would have done, he listed it on eBay and ended up netting a swifty $15,350. Hooey! <laughs> but if you thought that was crazy, you've seen nothing yet. In April of that year, a different eBay user listed his own Szechuan. This was no big bundle of sauce though. It wasn't even a packet of it. Nope, it was a photo of one. You heard that right. Um, surely no one would bid on this of all things. Oh, my naive friend, haven't you realized by now? Yes, yes, of course they would. Supposedly, the pick was signed by Rick and Morty creator Dan Harmon, but there was no evidence of this in the listing photo. And the pack was open. Does anyone else think that looks suspiciously like barbecue? Hmm. Even so, at one point, bidding on the JPEG was up so high it hit a monumental $99,100. No, you didn't mishear me. And it might have gone even higher, but eBay struck the listing down before the lucky winner could receive his printout. Poor guy, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity gone, just like McDonald's Szechuan sauce. A Blobby Buy If you're unfamiliar with beloved UK children's TV character Mr. Blobby, let me show you. Ugh, I know. He's pure nightmare fuel to me as well. Which is why I can't believe anybody would want to spend a small fortune on a manky old blobby costume. But oh boy, they did. Let me explain. Back in the 90s, the character was in a very famous BBC TV show called Noel's House Party. The BBC planned to establish an overseas version of the show, so had a brand new Mr. Blobby costume created. Presumably from human souls. For one reason or another, though, the show never materialized and the costume was left behind. As nobody else wanted it, a former employee brought the demon home with them where he sat menacingly for years. Until January 2023, that is, when they finally had enough of the horrid thing and threw it up on eBay to sell. I don't know how much they were expecting to make from the cursed auction, but I'm willing to bet it wasn't a colossal $79,000. That's right, after a grand total of 178 bids, the 25-year-old costume was finally sold. Though I shudder to think what kind of devil worshipper actually bought the thing. Churchill's Bits in the Bins Ever heard the old saying, one man's trash is another man's treasure? 
Well, in 2019, UK refuse worker David Rose proved this saying is absolutely true. Though he's coy about the details, David says that while working on a council rubbish tip, he stumbled across something incredible. A collection of memorabilia owned by British wartime Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Acting quickly, he grabbed the treasure out of the trash and took it home with him. When he inspected the hall properly, he realized he had a cigar and cigar case, top hat, and even a signed photo of the guy. Alongside these goodies were stacks of letters proving that the items had been given by Churchill to his former cook as a gift. So it was all totally legit. ka -ching. Supposedly, Churchill was a rather generous employer and would regularly give his belongings away to his staff. All right, but how much was all this actually worth? To find out, David went on Antiques Roadshow, a British TV show where guests can have their belongings valued. Their experts valued his lot at an impressive $12,700. Nice, but I can't help thinking why anyone would just throw away a collection of such historically significant items. There's gotta be more to this whole thing. What do you reckon? Let me know in the comments down below. A Declaration of Independence. I once went to a flea market and actually came away with fleas. It's a long story. But the point is that I only ever come across complete garbage at those things. Back in 1991, however, one art collector had a much better flea market experience than me. While bargain hunting in Adamstown, Pennsylvania, one guy stumbled across a super ugly painting. He had zero interest in whatever awful picture was in there, but he did really want the frame. So he dropped four bucks on it and lugged the thing home. Unfortunately, upon closer inspection, he realized that even the frame was poorly made. Damn. Just as he was about to throw it away, though, he dismantled it and noticed something strange. An old document was poking out from behind the frame. Curious, the man removed the piece of paper and gasped. It was the Declaration of Independence. If you've been living under a particularly big rock and haven't heard, that's the most important document in American history, written up to announce America's intention to secede from British rule. Holy cow. Now, our guy wasn't sure if this was some kind of joke, so he took it to an expert at Sotheby's Auction House, where it was confirmed to be 100% authentic. This was one of the few original copies written way back in 1776. In other words, an outrageously rare find. Because it had been kept in the back of the frame, it was perfectly preserved. But what the heck was it doing there anyway? Well, it could have been hidden there to keep it out of the hands of British soldiers during the American Revolution, but we really don't know. Whatever the truth, in 1991, he sold the invaluable artifact for a grand total of $2.2 million. In today's cash, that's around $5 million. Crazy, right? And it gets even crazier. It was sold again in 2000 for $7.4 million, which is a jaw-dropping $13 million today. Man, so he walked away with millions of dollars and I got millions of irritating parasites. Just my luck. A Bag of Brooklyn All right, we've seen a lot of random stuff go for a hell of a lot of money now, right? But this next one makes me question pretty much everything about my life. Seriously. Back in 2015, Vice writer Dan Ozzy came up with an unbelievable idea to make money. He grabbed a plastic bag and went outside into his hometown of Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Then he filled the bag up with air and posted it to eBay. I repeat, he posted a bag of air to eBay. The listing was admittedly very tongue-in-cheek, more of a commentary on the cost of living in Williamsburg than a serious post, but that doesn't make this story any less ridiculous. Bidding started at $40, which already sounds like it's way too much, right? Then things went from weird to downright insane. A flurry of intense bidding began and the price ballooned. Within just three days of going live, the listing had received a whopping 41 bids and reached a truly depressing $20,100. Man, there are no words. As news spread, articles popped up all over the web, each one of them more incredulous than the last. Some laughed along with the silliness of it all, while others speculated on the auction being some kind of elaborate modern art piece. But then disaster. The bizarre listing caught the wrath of the eBay moderators. Dan's account was banned and the listing removed. Supposedly, the auction breached eBay's terms of service as air may not necessarily constitute an actual item. 
Well, that seems as logical a finale as any. All right, I know this thing didn't actually sell for a fortune, but it was going to, and it's just way too crazy a story to leave out. GG Easy. What happens when celebrity worship veers towards celebrity obsession? Well, for some, it's a chance to profit off the unlikeliest of things. This is Belle Delphine, a British e-celebrity who gained masses of online followers for the weird and outlandish things she'd do for clout, including eating raw eggs and putting googly eyes on a dead octopus? Right. But these things pale in comparison with the harebrained scheme she cooked up back in 2019. Delphine decided to sell, wait for it, her used bath water. Ew. She took a couple of baths, decanted all the water into small plastic tubs, then labeled it Gamer Girl Bath Water and sold it on. Each tiny tub was priced at $29.99 and believe it or not, they quickly sold right out. You heard me, this stunt not only worked for her, but it worked out better than she ever could have hoped. Take a guess at how much she made off it. Go on, I dare ya. I bet you weren't thinking $12.7 million, but that's apparently the amount. Holy mother of... Who in their right minds would spend 30 bucks on dirty bath water? And why? Well, looks like a lot of people would. And did. Delphine expressly stated that the water was for sentimental purposes only, but given the fact people were asking her if they could vape the stuff, I'm thinking sentimental isn't quite the right word. Weirdos. To be fair to Belle though, I'd gladly sell my bath water too if I can make millions of dollars from it. So long as you guys wouldn't mind the water being green and smelling of armpit. Don't ask. Well, with that, I think I've just about had enough of these crazy stories. Which of them blew your mind the most? And have you ever found anything for super cheaps and managed to sell it on for an absolute fortune? If you did, let me know down in the comments below, and thanks for watching.